So I've been doing the whole home lab thing now for a few months, and I thought what I'd do today is talk about some of the things that I actually use my home lab for, because believe it or not, having a home lab is more than just saying you have a home lab. You actually use these things for something. It's just not a nerd cred type of thing. So what I want to do today is talk about five of the things that I actually self-host on my home lab and some of the things that I may want to self-host in the future. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it it'd really help the channel so the first thing on the list that I self host and the one that I actually have the least to show you is vault warden vault warden is the self-hosted version of bitwarden only this one here is written in rust and it is a very good password manager I've just cho chosen to self host it now first off I host it, everything that you're going to see today in Docker. so it if you're familiar at all with setting stuff up in Docker, you can probably do this yourself. And you don't have to have a expensive home lab to actually set up any of these things. You could do all this stuff in a virtual machine on your main computer if you wanted to do so. Now, the reason why I'm obviously not showing you anything of Vault Warden is because I don't have a dummy account to show you. All of my stuff is there. I'm not going to show you any of that stuff. So just know that I self-host this and it's awesome. Now, I will say this, that I do have some reservations about self-hosting my own password manager, especially after, you know having to be able to connect to it over the internet. And I worry about my lack of knowledge and securing that kind of thing, but I've learned some stuff over the course of doing this that I feel fairly comfortable in doing it. Uh, but I will say, just make sure you're up to snuff when it comes to your security if you're going to self-host something like this. But other than that, that's Vault Warden. It's a password manager. That's really all you need to know. The second thing that I host or self-host is Nextcloud. This is Nextcloud. And I don't actually use the web interface all that much. I use the Nextcloud app, which it looks like, uh, where is that pesky button? Oh, it's right here. Okay, oops, it didn't It didn't actually stay up there. That's one of my problems with the Nextcloud app is that you can't actually get it to stay up there. But anyways, the Nextcloud app is what I use most often, and that just basically puts a folder on your computer where all of your stuff is synced. And that's basically what I use that for. I will also attach Nextcloud to IOTIS, which is my note-taking application, and that will allow me to sync my sync my notes but other than that that's basically what I use Nextcloud for I don't use any of the other fancy stuff like I don't use calendar or the email or stuff like that although I could but basically I just use this as a file syncing tool I also have this set up for a couple other people in my family so I have given them the ability to synchronize full files and photos and stuff like that from their devices to their computers as well so basically I'm using this as a P cloud alternative so I don't actually have to pay for it so that's what Nextcloud is for now uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about my thoughts on Nextcloud, we'll be doing a live podcast on Nextcloud uh, tomorrow evening on this channel, or you can catch the recorded version uh, on the weekend. So there you go. That's Nextcloud. Now, the next one that I self-host is Calibre Web. Now, this was much more useful about a week ago than it is right now, and I don't know if I'll ma keep maintaining it or not, but... Overall, I really do like Calibre Web. It allows me to have access to my books on a website that I control. I can, at least I was able to go through and send books from here to my Kindle app so I can read them on my mobile phone, or I could just use the website if I want to because you can read from this website. And you can do things like edit metadata here, organize things into different series, mark things as read, rate things and stuff like that, all that on the web. Now, when I say this was more useful a week ago, what I mean is that I switched hosting providers for my email and I can no longer use the one that I did. Now I, I use Proton and Proton doesn't offer IMAP support, so I'm having a hard time setting up something like this to send my books over email to Kindle. Now I tried to set it up with Gmail, it didn't quite work. What I've been doing instead is I just use the Calibre app, which I was able to use with Gmail, and that works fine. But because that kind of has stopped working because of my switch to email providers, this has become less useful. But I still do really, really like this. So if you have a lot of eBooks, you can put them in this thing and have access to them. And it's it's just a, such a good option for managing your eBooks online. So that is Calibre Web. The next one is something that I'm not gonna be able to pronounce. I think it's called Tatuli. Tatuli, I can't pronounce it. And and someone in the in the, in the comments below is gonna say like, oh, this means this or that, and this is how you pronounce it. I can't. 
<laughs> I'm horrible pronouncing names that are normal. I can't, like that there I can't pronounce. But anyways, basically what this is is a stat tracking thing for Plex. And you're probably thinking like, Matt, that's not all that useful, but I find it really freaking cool. Basically, it tracks over the entire time it's installed exactly what you've been watching, listening to, or viewing or whatever on Plex. So it'll tell you how long you've watched certain movies, and it gives you graphs on how long you've done things. If you have multiple users who view th your stuff through Plex, it can tell you who's viewed what, how often they've been accessing the server. So if you are if you have kids, this could help you, but even if you don't have kids and you just wanna kind of keep track of what you're using. So as you can tell, most of my use is music. I don't do a ton of viewing when it comes to movies or TV shows, but I do a lot of music use. And basically, this will keep track of exactly not only when I've been listening, how long I've been listening, but also what I've been listening to. So if you go, if I go back to the home here, it'll show me that you know that the most played artists, the most played songs, things like that, and it'll also show me everything that has been recently been added to my library as well. So it's awesome. It'll also show you the total statistics of your library so it'll tell you how many artists albums and tracks you have how many movies and tv shows and stuff you have in total and that will count all of the libraries that you have so i have two different libraries here my mom has her stuff here all that stuff's country then i have mine she has way more music than i do but the point here is is that it will track everything and that's awesome i let i'm one of those people who really enjoys stats and this will give you all the stats needed for plex now there i do believe and i may be wrong about this but there is a version of this for jellyfin so if you want something like this but for jellyfin i do believe that does exist i'm not sure what it's called so don't ask me so the next one on the list is called fresh rss actually let me log in here Basically, what Fresh RSS is, is a RSS feed aggregator. And basically, you put all of your RSS feeds in here, and you can read them from here, or you can you can send this whole entire collection of feeds to an application like Reader on iOS, or to, uh, I think there's one called like Newsfeeder for Linux or whatever. I'm not sure if that's the actual name of it, but there's a whole bunch of RSS applications that can go along with this. You just sign in with your RSS feeds, and it will allow you to have a whole collection of RSS feeds that you manage, and you can, it will save favorites right to your self-hosted server. So if you have a whole, if you save a, uh, an article or whatever to our fresh RSS, it will save those here on the server and you don't have to kind of rely on an application to do that for you that's local. It's just, it's up there on the cloud. And you can manage your feeds. You can have things like Reddit, things like I have here. All the stuff is the Linux Reddit feeds that I subscribe to. I have one for a whole bunch of tech blogs. So if I look here, I have like Mac Rumors and Gizmodo and Mashable and stuff. And it's just a RSS feed of all of my feeds. And then I have a mobile application called Reader Classic that I use on my iPhone that will allow me to access all this stuff on the go. There's also, like I said, Linux applications that you can use to to tie into this there's android applications that you can use so if you are into rss at all fresh rss is fantastic and it basically replaces the other proprietary feed aggregator stuff and it's all again self-hosted and that's really cool so there's that now the next thing i'm going to talk about or the last one i should say the last thing i'm going to talk about is plex now plex is obviously the first non open source app on this list and the only one. Now it's not the only proprietary app that I self host, but this is the one that I use the most and the one that I'm gonna talk about today. Plex is, I think, fairly self-explanatory. It hosts my movies, TV shows, and music. I use it constantly, it's fantastic. Now, what you're probably wondering is, Matt, why didn't you choose Jellyfin? Well, the answer to that is twofold. First off, Jellyfin requires two things to install, unless you're going to use the Docker container, uh, which I, when I made this decision, I wasn't going to use the Docker containers. I may try Jellyfin later on, now that I know that there's a Docker container for you to use. Uh, but when I made the choice, 
I just wanted to install one thing, and Plex Media Server allowed me to do that. Uh, second of all, the UI for Plex is far superior than Jelly to Jellyfin, at least in my opinion. I prefer Plex's UI to Jellyfin, and it's not even much of a competition. Especially the mobile application is so much better than the Jellyfin thing. The Jellyfin thing just feels like it's a web wrapper in an iOS app, and at least the last time I tried it, I should say, and it wasn't good. So that's the second reason why I chose Plex over Jellyfin. So if you haven't heard of Plex before, I'm not sure where you've been living, but basically this just allows me to have all of my movies here, have all of my TV shows, which I don't actually have as many as I used to. I've deleted quite a few, uh, and most of these are things that are way in the past. You can notice I don't have very many brand new TV shows. I don't watch much TV anymore. Uh, so most of the stuff that I enjoy came out 10, 15 years ago, which is just makes me feel old. Uh, and then I have music here, which I actually do have a lot more new music than I do new, new TV shows. So I have a ton of different uh, music that I enjoy. And then I have the one for my mom there as well. So basically, this just manages all of my music. Now, like I said, I, I would love to use something open source. And I may give Jellyfin a, another try now that I, I, again, know more about Docker than I did before, containers than I did before. So that'll be something for me to look into later on. But as of right now, I use Plex. So those are five of the things that I self-host. I do self-host quite a few other things. So this is my portainer, which manages all of my Docker containers. The only thing that this doesn't manage is Plex, which isn't a Docker container. That's a dev package. So here's Calibri Web. There's fresh rss home page is basically a home page it, ha it has all of my links there along the bottom it allows me to monitor my proxmox and portainer and plex and the speed test thing that i have for my home server so that's basically what that is i have nginx set up to help me with security and putting and exposing some things to the web portainer obviously is what's managing all this stuff i also have cert so let me actually show you Search. This is Search. This is a search engine. I self-host this thing as well. It's just hosted on my home lab. So no, I'm not exposing it to the internet for everybody to use. Uh, but basically, this is just a search engine. So I can search for you know whatever, and it will search. It's basically my version of Google. And it pulls results from various places. So things like DuckDuckGo and Google and Bing and stuff like that. So you get a kind of a, an amalgamation of results. And while they're not always the best, I haven't found it to be really any worse than any of the other search engines that are these days. And you don't really have any AI nonsense for you to have to deal with. It does do the summary stuff that Google does, but it doesn't do it AI-like. So that's Cirque's. Uh, if you're interested in me doing a video on search, let me know in the comment section below. I do kind of have a vague idea of one. So, uh, one of my patrons, one of my very early patrons requested Cirque's long, long ago. And uh, I do plan on doing that. But if you're interesting, interested even more and would, would like that soon, leave a comment in the comment section below. Another thing that I, t I run is something called Speed Test. I don't think I really need to show you that. Basically what that does is it runs a speed test on my server three times a day so I can just kind of keep track of the speed the internet speed on my search server and that's basically it. and the last one there is just watchtower there's really not anything to show you there basically what that does is keep all of my docker containers up to date so that's the stuff that I self host on my home lab there's not much there now I used to host image uh, I stopped using that almost completely I just use Nextcloud now. I don't really see a need to use Image anymore. Uh, and I used to host something called Firefly, which is a, like a, an accounting application where you're going to track your spending. But I found that really annoying to use because I had to, you know, if I, if I spent something, you know, on the road or, you know, out and about or whatever, I'd have to remember it, come back to my computer and log it there. And that just reminded me way too much of balancing a checkbook. It was like the 90s all over again. So <laughs> anyways, those are the things that I self-host. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I want to self-host in the future. I have some ideas. So I've talked a little bit about this on the podcast, but I would like to self-host either GitLab or Gitea, G-I-T-E-A. That way I can have a self-hosted Git instance as well. I'd love to be able to do that. And that's something that I've kind of been dabbling in over the course of the last few days. And I also would like to self-host an instance of PeerTube. Now, 
I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen. I have aspirations to do it. I wouldn't be able to do it locally on my home lab. I'd have to do that, you know, like on a Linode or somewhere. So that's one of the things that's kind of keeping me from doing it. But I would like to kind of do that because this, the Peer Tube instance that I was on, along with all the others, kind of had to stop doing the whole YouTube sync thing. And that makes it almost unusable for me. So if, I, if I'm going to do it, I have to do it on my own and do all the synchronization stuff on my own. It's something that I kind of want to do. I'm still thinking about it. We'll see if that ever happens. The storage is pretty pricey and add on top of setting it all up. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. So I have some vague plans. I will say that my home lab has reached a level of stability that I've kind of just kind of stayed at for the last couple of months. I haven't added anything really all that new. Uh, things have just kind of been chugging along, being really, really good. I haven't, like I said, I haven't add, added much new. And it, it that contrasts to when I first set it up, if you'll remember, I talked about it probably on the podcast or in a video or something, where I was installing four or five Docker containers every day. You know, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I was kind of like an obsession, right? That has tamped down and toned down a little bit, so I'm happy about that. I I do still keep my eye out for really cool things that I might like to self-host in the future, so that that's something that I'll probably continue to always do. But I'm I'm no longer like oh I have to self-host that. Let me try it for five seconds and then realize that I don't actually you know need it or ever going to use it. So those are the things that I self-host and would like to self-host. If you also self-host stuff, leave your comments in the comment section below. Or if you're interested in doing so in the future, I'd love to hear from you guys. Those comments are some of the things that make this channel so awesome. So thank you so very much. If you've left the comment and if you would also leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I post stuff on Linux and self-hosting and home lab stuff. All sorts of stuff on the channel fairly regularly and if you want to have access to that the best way to do so is hit the subscribe button now I did say in the last video hit the big red subscribe button I don't know if the subscribe buttons actually still red or not it's one of those things where you just kind of every once in a while I'll subscribe to something and I don't actually pay attention to what the button color is anymore so the subscribe button whatever color it happens to be so anyways if you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey those links will be in the video description as well you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast just like all of these fine people thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube because they're all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support again thank you so very much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time i hope you have a wonderful week and uh there you go thanks so much for watching <laughs>